Hey guys, I'm Riz Grestar, and how about we watch a death battle, Ken versus Ryu. Oh wait, that's not a death battle, that's a rap battle made by Starbomb, which you can find here if you're mature enough to handle the mature content. Ken versus Terry. So make sure to click here to go to the official release first, like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff, and then come back here and we'll watch it together. So you might be thinking, wow Riz, that was awfully weird how you plugged that Starbomb music video first. Well, first of all, it's really, really funny if you're into that sort of thing, and again, are able to handle the mature content therein because it is a pretty mature song and video, but I find it funny and that is actually the only way that I can think of that I really know Ken as a character, so that pretty much means that I don't know Ken at all. Like I know that Ken is from Street Fighter. I don't know who Terry is, I don't know what he's even from, I didn't I didn't look into it because I usually don't, that's just how I approach these, like if I don't know a character, cool, I'll learn what I can, you know, about them from the analyses. So yeah. I'm just saying. Y'all should really know by now, I mean, if this is your first video of mine, then of course I don't expect you to know, but uh, for those of you who do know me pretty well, you should know that I just don't know fighting games. I just never played fighting games like Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter or King of Fighter, is that a thing? When I was a kid and, so, and I just never picked him up now that I'm, you know, more of an adult, so. I don't know the characters, and that's just a thing. By the way, my childhood was fine, I just didn't- I just didn't do that. But not knowing either of the characters pretty much at all, there's not a whole lot that I can say about this. Like, my initial thought is that Ken has more of an advantage because he's from Street Fighter, and because that's a more prominent game, I'm just inclined to think that they're, like, more powerful, more capable characters, but that is not at all necessarily true. Like, it could be true, but, you know, something being more popular or more prominent doesn't at all mean that the characters are more powerful. So, it's just, I think, because I like Ken more based on what little I know, which is really just that video. But yeah, so, what I'm trying to say is that I don't really know enough about either of the characters to make any sound sort of reasonable judgment. So, we'll just have to wait for the analyses for that. So, with that said, let's get to watching. And play. One. Ten. 10 10 October 10th 2016 everything changes but we won't tell you what everything we won't yeah they're not gonna tell us what that means all right October 10th something screw attack related is going to change maybe death battle related hey, maybe Riz, not what is blonde but hair, everything red and fights like hell it's Ken uh, today's fighters oh they both oh, do you all right it. Ken Masters, the street fighting And Terry man. Bogard? And Terry Bogard, the orphan turned king of fighters. King of he Fighters, was I right about a name? Yeah, and no me. I know their weapons, that series has been featured in previous death battles, which is why I thought of it, but I didn't realize he was from that. That's interesting. As the son of a rich hotel tycoon, young Ken Masters wanted for nothing. Stupid oh. rich kids, why don't their parents ever teach them any real value? Like squirrel cooking or how to throw a punch. Well, turns out Ken's squirrel an exception. Cooking, huh? Eager to teach his son some discipline, his father sent him to Japan to train in martial arts. Oh. Yeah, turns out Ken's dad was buddies with the master karate hermit Gokin. That's who helpful. Ken trained under for a decade, alongside a young warrior named Ryu. Under Gokin's eye, Ken was taught the ways of the Unsatsuken, or Assassination Fist, okay. albeit Gokin's own non-lethal variant. He A non-lethal like assassin fist. Key energy known as the Hadoken, and also the Tatsumaki Senpukaku. Ah. Tatsumaki Senpukaku, also known as the Hurricane Kick. Okay. A spinning kick that leaves opponents reeling, but is also pretty good for getting past projectiles. Cool. But the move he excels at the most is the Dragon Fist. The Shoryuken. Shoryuken. It's a devastating a new phrase. rising uppercut, and Ken's so damn good at it, he can set his whole damn fist on fire! That's pretty good, at I guess. Best, he can perform the Shinryu Ken, or Divine Dragon Fist. Oh. Not only is this attack engulfed in flame, it also creates a vacuum effect. By the way, is that movie, like, at all good? Multiple strikes. <laughs> Just the wondering. Shinryuken is the most powerful natural form of the Shoryuken technique. Okay. Well, so long as you're not possessed by evil murder energy, but you should watch Ryu vs. Scorpion to learn all about that. Fair With enough. his training complete, Ken returned to America, proving his new discipline and kickassery by winning several fighting tournaments. Good for him. Including the premier U.S. martial arts tournament, where he won the finals and met his future wife, Eliza. Oh. <laughs> That is certainly what I would call a win. <laughs> Proud of his victories, Ken returned to Gokin's dojo to tell his former master the good news. But he got there a little too late. Oh no, murder. Yeah, missed out on all the finger painting. 
After meeting up with Ryu to mourn their master's apparent death, Ken decided to enter the prestigious World Warrior tournaments just for the chance to fight Ryu again. Oh, but Ken's wait, fight always him. fighting, both in and out of tournaments. He takes on anything from crime lords to professional assassins, and he's strong enough to send a man flying 15 feet in the air with a single punch. Okay. The force of which would definitely kill an average person, <laughs> which Ken is anything but. Right. He's strong enough to beat the dictator Bison with Ryu, and he's fast enough to dodge attacks from Akuma, one of the most powerful characters in the Street Fighter universe. Okay. Then there was his cage match against the claw wielding Vega, where he punched him so hard he completely reversed the guy's momentum after he leaped from the ceiling. Oh, Doing so after that, yeah. losing tons of blood from dozens of lacerations, and with both of his feet broken and impaled. Wow. Considering much of a punch's force comes from the lower half of a person's body, this is practically unbelievable. Talk about endurance. I can see how he got his way. You know. The guy's tough enough to fall over 100 feet into the mud and then just get up more pissed than anything else. But when it comes down to it, Ken's strongest asset is his conviction to win, hmm. only made stronger when it comes to defending his friends. Though he is pretty cocky, if he's feeling good about a fight, he'll sometimes just laugh at his opponents instead of finishing them off, leaving oh. himself wide open. Still, That's if not you good. enter the ring with Ken Masters, chances are you're gonna get burned. Okay, there's Ken. He is a lot stronger than I Let's thought, because I thought he was more of a... I didn't think he was Harry a joke Bogart character, but I thought that people joked about him more, you know what I mean. Hell, he didn't even have a last name. Oh. Stranded with his brother Andy, Terry grew up an orphan on the dangerous streets of South Oh, that, that other one's Until a dude. they were okay. adopted by Jeff Bogard, who immediately introduced them to a regiment of bonding and kicking ass. Now that's a good dad. Well, until he got murdered. Yeah, he then he was a bad ten dad. Years old, Terry and Andy watched helplessly as their foster father was murdered before their eyes by Geese Howard, a notorious crime lord. Darn it, Geese! Swearing vengeance, the brothers spent the next decade training to one day take down Geese. What did Waterfowl ever do to him? <laughs> no, pay not, attention, not birds, Geese, Geese Howard, the bad guy. Yeah. Look, Wiz. I know you're not a poultry scientist degree holder like myself, but you should know that the singular term for geese is goose. It's just common sense. Right. <laughs> uh, let's just move on. As the years went by, Terry became an exceptional martial artist, mastering boxing, karate, kung fu, and kickboxing. Oh. He developed an impressive list of techniques, like the burn knuckle, a fierce punch surrounded by energy. And the crack shoot, a jumping axe kick. Or he can just punch the ground so freaking hard he makes a power wave. All right. He sends a deadly wave of energy through the earth towards whatever poor bastard he's fighting. <laughs> but even after learning all of these, Terry knew he would need more to defeat Geese. Goose. No. Ah. So he sought out his foster father's old master, who taught him the secret technique of the Hakyoku Seiken, the all art right. of the eight extremities holy fist. Holy fist, huh? Is that like punching the Jesus into people or something? I mean, no, but he is punching with the power of Earth. Fire, wind, water, heart, go, Terry! Okay, sorry, couldn't help myself. Anyway, with Hakyoku Seiken, Terry just wondering how literally, literally that, pull how and literal. channel energy from the Earth beneath his feet. Ah. And with the Earth's Chi, he can enhance his attacks to extreme level. Like turning his ordinary power wave into the monstrously titanic power geyser. Okay. Apart from that, his Buster Wolf punch puts his burn knuckle to shame, and with the Star Dunk Volcano, he slams his foes down in a fiery explosion. So when Terry was ready to take Geese down, he figured what better way than in the worldwide tourney Geese himself was hosting. The yeah, that King makes sense enough. Fighters tournament. And in the end, he most certainly got his revenge in a battle which was apparently so intense its spectators compared it to a fight between starving wolves, oh. earning Terry the nickname, the legendary Hungry Wolf. That's a badass nickname. I'm just trying Although to compare feats the entire Terry time. It's not working. Enough, so we got to do it a second time. Not that Terry was too weak or anything. For example, in his fight with Jamin, mm -hmm. he took a huge explosion in the back, got a car thrown at him, jumped up an elevator shaft as it was blowing up, got blasted in the face with a wall of fire which smashed him into a concrete wall, and answered by power geysering so hard he wrecked the factory he was standing on. Oh. He bled everywhere. But then this chick made him better with a good old stripping cuddle. <laughs> oh, and that guy jamming? He's fast enough to catch bullets. And strong enough to shoot them back. 
with his fingers. Huh. Not good enough for you? Well, how about the time Terry saved a co-worker from six falling I-beams by smashing them one by one in mid-air? Keep in mind, a single I-beam yeah. is designed to support over 3,000 pounds of pressure. Huh. And he took care of it so fast the would-be victim didn't even notice. It's a bit of a shame, then, that at his worst, Terry's a pretty sore loser. Even though his willpower is enough to match the power of Mars, the god of war, what? an unexpected failure can still really shake him up. But when Terry Bogard sets his mind to something, he'd rather bleed out than walk away. Okay. Oh, that sounded so intense, man. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. All right. But first, no. I got something to tell you about saving time and Fine. Food. Do so, it. What's not to love? Wait, is this the same thing they convert? You know how it is. Researching characters and making I think it is the same thing they had last time, yeah. time consuming. I don't have time to go to the store and make my own meals, but I also don't want to doom my existence to fast food sugar addiction. Why not? Thankfully, Blue that sounds Apron fine. changed all of that. For less than $10 a meal, Blue Apron sends me seasonal recipes with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. Each meal comes with an easy step-by-step -step recipe which can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. I don't really have anything less. to show this up. This chicken stir-fry only took about 20. Check a, out this week's I menu and get your first desk. three meals free That's pretty with cool, free right? shipping by going to blueapron.com slash battle. I have my See Pikachu yourself, hat. It feels and tastes it's to pretty cool too. impeccable home-cooked meals with um, Blue Apron. That's blueapron.com slash like battle. I'm not a speed right cuber now, it's at all. What? Is it and pause. All right, let's talk about this death battle really quick then. Okay, so I will just come out and say that right now I think that Terry is going to win. While I was surprised by uh, how much better Ken was than I had imagined, it seems like Terry, by the end of it, just had more than he was capable of. Um, I mean, the whole feat of like Ken falling the 100 feet like that in surviving that definitely is impressive by human standards but i certainly think it's possible i mean i think your bones would be terribly broken but i'm pretty sure i've heard stories about skydivers surviving like when their parachute didn't open things like that um especially when it's falling into mud like it would still hurt like heck but not as much as solid ground um possibly even i don't know how mud would compare to water you know i know that water smacking into it is like smacking into concrete because of the tension and everything but i don't know how that compares really um, but then I was thinking, well, it was definitely impressive for Ken, if I ever call him Ryu, by the way, I apologize. I don't know if I have yet, or if I will, but just in case, I do apologize. When Ken, you know, like, jumped up as the dude is leaping down at him, and he punched him so hard to switch his velocity, like, I think that that is kind of the same as when, or like, that Terry kind of did that with the eye beams falling down. Maybe he didn't exactly, like, redirect their velocity to go up, but he was able to get, like, five, six, I don't know how many of them, but a number of them that quickly um, without the victim, the would-be victim, knowing, you know, that's pretty impressive. And then, you know, being blasted, you know, like, ex taking explosions right to the face, being slammed into concrete walls, like, all of this different stuff, it seems like he is also very, very durable. Being able to, like, destroy a building with one of his, you know, like, seismic punches kind of thing, like, let alone just making a seismic wave, you know, in those volcanic multiple explosions, but being able to take down a building, too, like, that is a lot of strength. So while Ken is very powerful, from what it seems, um, especially if you consider, like, the whole flaming fist thing, it seems like Terry might be a little bit more, but and I might be misreading things. Of course, I am very likely to get things wrong. Like, that's just something that I do very often, but I think that Terry, it seemed like he was stronger in that instance. And two, one of Ken's things that stood out was his whirlwind kick that it could let him get through projectiles. And Terry didn't really have projectile weapons, which might be, you know, that is against him not having projectile weapons while Ken does, but I don't think that that would be enough to really turn, you know, turn the tide of it um, in, his, um, in Ken's favor. And uh, then fighting the dude, I, I kind of got confused on this part, but I think they were saying that Terry fought a dude who was fast enough to be able to catch a bullet and then strong enough to flick it back with his fingers to penetrate. Like, that's pretty impressive, being able to fight and do all that. Um, Ken's being cocky and arrogant, you know, like, not taking the time to, you know, deal a finishing blow or deliver a finishing blow, but instead, like, laughing about it, that could definitely get him into trouble, whereas Terry's, you know, weakness of, um, you know, getting real down, I don't think that would happen mid-fight. Like, that would happen after he lost the fight and still had his life. But if he loses his fight, you know, he's dead, so that's not, I don't think that's gonna come into play, or if it does, I don't think that it should, unless I'm mis- 
like misunderstanding the character that they were trying to represent with Terry. Um, and then on the other side, like they're both determined, but you know, he's willing to fight until he bleeds out kind of thing. Like, yeah, that's what, that's what it's going to take. Um, I'm curious, I only know like that one bullet dude that Terry fought, and I know that some of the other people that Ken fights are really impressive, so I don't know how to really compare that, but it just seems like overall things were in Terry's favor. I don't know for sure, but that's what I'm going with. So Terry Bogart is going to win this death battle and play. Let's see if I'm right, and if I'm wrong, let's see how. Challenge me after some practice. <laughs> oh no, it's a shadow silhouetting. Oh. Music just Go kicked on. up there, you know. <laughs> Okay. Wait, they're just gonna fight to the death here? This seems like a training thing. It's an odd recovery. Ow! Fire crotch! Take this seriously. This over. Oh no, it didn't even hit! Everyone watching, they're like, oh crap, you know? Oh, now they're really like, are you okay? I thought I heard my legs up. What was that, Chloe? Oh, the Earth Tower! Oh, snap. He's still standing. <laughs> Pulling Ash catch him. <laughs> Ash catch. Oh, is that his head? Okay. Is that his head gone? KO! Bummer. So, on the bright side, this means Eliza's single now, right? Boomstick. <laughs> I mean, what we're all thinking kind of? Lives. Both Ken and Terry had been fighting since they were children, and each won their fair share of tournaments. Yeah. However, Terry's sheer power proved too much for Ken to handle. Okay. Outside of tourneys, Ken's most notable victories were usually only possible because he had help. Sure, Ken's taken down Zangief, Hugo, and Vega multiple times, who are extremely deadly in their own right. But, but they aren't nearly as heavy hitters as those on Terry's resume. Okay. Like Krauser and Mars. Also, Bro, I forgot about the God of Mean who can never God of War. Bullets, proves Terry can match someone over twice the speed of sound, much faster than anything Ken's ever shown. Right. And when Eliza hears about this, she's gonna feel terrible. <laughs> the winner is Terry. Uh, Bogart. All right, claps for Terry, guys. Next, Next time, time on Death Battle. On Death Battle. Let's go. Let's do this. Sonic the Hedgehog. Wait. It's gonna be someone else. Get your oh. to see me. Yeah, that was from hey guys, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Stick. I'm Ben, I play Wiz, and next I mean, time we've song. got Amy Rose That's versus... what I know it from, at least. Well, probably not who you think. You can find probably out not who you're fighting <laughs> first by sticking to It's Mark not Twitter DDD, I'm group. pretty sure, because they had that in a one-minute melee. Or was it a DBX? That we produce early by becoming a I don't first remember member. when they switched so over. So click the link in the description and start a 30-day free trial. You can do those things. Yeah, oh, and that was the end of the video. There was no, like, sign out or it. All right, that's the end of the... Well, then let's talk about this death battle. I guess first let's talk about the next time. So, Amy. Amy Rose from Sonic the Hedgehog. All right, um, admittedly, yeah, as you... Okay, so I know of her as a character. 
Obviously. Like, yeah, duh. Like I said, I played Sonic Adventure 2 Battle and stuff. So I've played some Sonic games, and I've seen her in Sonic X when I watched it before they went to the weird, like, space alien stuff. Um, and, you know, again, like, a couple of the Sonic games, but we never there really get to see a whole lot, I guess, of what she's capable of, or if I did see what she was capable of, I guess I would question the, like, how canonical it was, you know what I mean? Um, whether it would be, like, consistent. I definitely don't know how she is in the comics, and that's where I would attribute her most, like, potent feats and whatnot, because comics, or anime, like, manga, you know, all those th all three of those, I'm not, like, correcting myself, but all three of those, that's where you tend to find the most powerful things, as far as I've been able to notice, you know what I mean? Like, that's when, that's when you really get into the, the super crazy feats, like, yeah, well, this guy can eat a universe. Like, okay, cool, I guess I have no interest in that series anymore, because who, you can't top that. Where do you go from there? But yeah, uh, DDD is the only person that jumps to mind, but they only jumped to mind because there was, again, the One Minute Melee or the DBX. I'm not sure which one it was at the time, because, you know, Screw Attack first had One Minute Melee, and then I think that the people who were doing that, the animators, they then, like, moved on to something else, and so instead DBX came to replace One Minute Melee. That's my understanding of it, but I'm not sure when exactly that change took place or when exactly Amy vs. DDD came out. So it, even if, or regardless of which one it was, despite the fact that they have that, it still could be the death battle, but I don't think that it will be. With that said, I have no one else in mind. Um, am I more excited about this battle than others? Not really. Um, even though I, like, know of Amy, I don't really know her, and even what I do know of her, she's not my favorite character. So, you know, I'm as excited as I typically am for Death Battle, but I'm not, like, as excited as I was for, for like, Tracer versus Scout. Like, that kind of thing. As for this battle, hey, you know, it was one of those things where I'm glad I was right, I'm glad that I did weigh the feats in, you know, like, Terry's favor accurately, that he was stronger, that he was faster, things like that. Like, they're both, you know, superhuman. They are. But with what they're capable of and everything, that's just kind of what you run into in anime, isn't it? Um, but Terry just had... Terry had Ken beat. That's just what it ended up being. Like, I, I don't have a ton else to say, really. I am curious about how the anime or the movies are, but that's not really related to the death battle so much as what the death battle showed during the analysis portions. Um, so... Hmm. Yeah, nothing more to say there. Like, I'm... I was right. I'm glad I was right. I agree with their conclusion. And yeah, and I enjoyed the animation perfectly well enough. Like, I don't... No big complaints are jumping to my mind. I liked the part where, you know, the animation style changed when Ken was firing his thingy. Um, and I say that because I don't know if it has a different name than Hadoken in that case, you know what I mean? I don't know if that's, like, only Ryu's or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's the same thing in principle, but I don't know if it has a different name because it's not Ryu's and it's Ken. Or watch me be entirely wrong, and everyone's gonna tell me in the comments. Who knows? But yeah, it made sense that they would have the fight in the dojo. Like, kind of weird how it started, where, you know, Ken's just fighting, and then Terry shows up, and he's just like, Yeah, let's fight! And then they're like, Yeah, let's fight to the death, without saying it. They're just like, We know what's up, we're gonna do this. You know, it just kind of happened. But you can tell when everyone realized it, and they're like, Oh, we got a GTFO now, don't we? And they all just booked it, and someone broke their leg. <sighs> I wondered, was that, like, Hibigi? I can't recognize him, like, I don't know him that well, but I just know that he is beat up and he is from Street Fighter, so it could be Dan Hibiki, right? Could be. Anyway, um, the animation, yeah, I thought it was fine. It made sense to me that it, again, took place in the dojo and that it took place just in the dojo. Like, sure, it was blown up, but they never really traveled anywhere. They kind of were there and then stayed there, but that seems right with the characters. Like, the characters don't seem to type to really run. And you know what I mean? To like find new ground, it seems like they would just start there and then settle there unless someone was punched super far and the other ran up to meet them. But yeah, um, the weaknesses didn't really come into play for either of them as far as I was aware. Like, Ken didn't reach the point where he was winning to the point where he could be cocky and not finish him off, I don't think. Um, like, the cockiest you could say he ever was as far as the animation portrayed was when he survived the initial shockwave and then stood there and then the volcano got him, you know what I mean? Um, aside from that, he didn't really reach the point of, you know, expressing his arrogance. Uh, Terry, on the other hand, didn't really get injured enough to show how determined he was, I don't think. Unless you're gonna count the Ash Ketchum hat backwards kind of thing, which I guess that is a pretty show of determination. Or a pretty big, definite show of determination, you know what I mean. And, um... Yeah, I don't know, I just don't, I don't really have any complaints. Is this my favorite death battle? No, it's not. But, um, I certainly enjoyed my time. I do feel like I learned more about the two characters. I am happy, of course, that I was right in my, you know, in my guess, my prediction. Um, and I enjoyed, I enjoyed the animation, so... 
yeah, I just, I don't really have anything too negative to say aside from what I've already said, and that wasn't, that itself wasn't really all that negative. So with that, I'm just gonna leave it here and leave it to you guys to let me know what you thought about this death battle in the comments, whether you agree, whether you disagree. Remember that your opinions are fine, discussion is totally okay, argument too, in the purest sense of the word, but please do not resort to flame wars, do not resort to insulting people, it really frustrates me. I know that people are gonna do it anyway, because that is the way of the internet, but just know that I'm asking you not to, and you doing it anyway is just kind of a bugger off to me. So, by the way, I don't think it showed my arms, but that was a shrug when I did that. So thank you guys again for watching. Make sure to go and show support on the official release. Show Screw Attack the support too, because you know, they create the they deserve the appreciation and all that. And with that, we're calling it here. Cue outro, go!